How are you all, YouTube poets? Thank you again for checking in onto my channel. Today we are going to start talking about how often you should be writing. That's a question that even MFA students and people that are professionally writing don't really know. And the truth of the matter is, like everything I say on this channel, there really is no answer. But there are two disputing facts of people saying that they produce a lot more if they write daily and others say that they produce more quality work if they don't write daily. Um, first I guess we can start talking about writing daily. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, during the festival that I was at and I mentioned in my last video, Cobb Akbar was asked that question. He has a beast book out right now. Forgot the name of it but I'll put it down below. Um, he said that when he was younger, his grandfather told him this story about a cat and an ox, right? And you could be one or two of those people. You could be the ox that wakes up every day at 3 a.m., straps on his ox gear, and goes out into the plantation and plows for 12 and 15 hours a day, and he produces every day. Or you could be the cat the one that sleeps for the 18 hours of the day, and then wakes up and does its cat thing, eats a little bit, has a little bit of productivity, and then goes back to bed. He is an ox, and that's why he has published. It's kind of what he was basically saying. And what I'm trying to basically say is that you can either overwrite uh, and get a couple of good things out of it, or you could write just a, a, a tad bit less and hopefully something really powerful comes out of it. And many people come from that school of writing often too, like Richard Hugo in his book Triggering Town, which I'm reading for my undergrad class that I'm teaching. He mentions this in terms of a basketball analogy, that the only way you can get a ball into a hoop is if you practice often. And you practice your jump shot, you practice inside, you practice your three, and eventually your percentage is going to get up there because you're doing it over and over again. Uh, the same thing goes with writing. Writing is this self-perpetuating talent and skill. The more you write, you can only get better at it because you're so used to it. I would compare that if you're writing a paper in school and... Actually, if you write several papers throughout the semester, chances are by mid-semester, near the end semester for your final, you're banging them out. But then winter break or summer uh, break happens and then you come back to school in the fall or the spring and you realize you're starting from square one again. That's why if you are a writer, they say just keep on writing because it's something that just gets easier as you go along, just like language does. And then also you could choose to write less. There was a couple of poets that, um, I don't know, I guess I just won't mention just in case they don't want to know or they want people to know, that said that they don't write often, that they'll drop poetry for a month or two and pick it up again. And at the end of the year, if they have five or six very solid poems, to themselves they're happy that they were able to make something so precious as just their five or six, which is good too. And it, it's all interdependent on who you are as a writer. My two cents. If you're a writer that wants to write to really get better, now is the time where you should just be writing consistently. Because if you are moved by the line and you put that line onto a paper and you make that line into a poem, you're producing. And at this point you just need to keep producing. That's the only way you're going to get really good material. Also, you got to end up asking yourself why you're writing in the first place. If you're writing for an undergrad class or an MFA class, for example, you basically got to be writing every day or at least uh, producing one poem once a week. If you're a freelance writer or you're trying to get published, you should also be writing consistently because that's how you're going to start turning things out. But then there's also those people that just write for themselves. And if you're using poetry as a tool just for yourself, almost a sort of a catharsis or something therapeutic, then you can write at your own leisure. There's several different ways you can approach this. All in all, I guess my takeaway from this would be that there are poets that write like oxen, and there are other poets that write like cute little cats. Um, which one are you? I would like to know that by you putting a comment down below. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to start producing more tips like crazy. I should have readings coming up soon. I don't want to put those words in the air just in case I don't have any, but there should be more coming up. So please stay on the channel so you can see experiences from reading and you can check out my other experiences about tips on what can make you a better writer. And please subscribe. There's going to be a lot of learning around here. Hello, everyone.
and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be going over five tips for writing poetry. Uh, first and foremost, you have to get comfortable. Now, being comfortable could take shape in several forms. When you're writing, certain writers want to be in a certain setting to set a certain kind of mood. For example, you guys all heard of those Starbucks writers. 